Hello. I am Annie, presenter of the Mysteries episodes on Marvel and Mysteries. Today we will talk about the pyramids of Egypt and the great mysteries that hover over their construction. The pyramids of Giza are at once monuments and provocation, about 2.3 million blocks, an original height that exceeded 480 feet, and tons and tons of stone set with a precision that still inspires wonder. A frequently cited datum is the latitude of the Great Pyramid, a number that, when written without the decimal point, curiously matches the speed of light. The speed of light is about 186,000 miles per second, a fact that many point to as a clue, and that fuels the debate about numerical coincidences. There is also the theory of alignment with Orion, the idea that the three great pyramids mirror the belt of Orion and therefore connect to an ancient cosmology. It is a seductive hypothesis that places sky and stone in dialogue, but it is controversial among specialists when angles, scales, and chronologies are examined. More concretely, let us put the numbers on the table. Archaeological estimates point to millions of tons of material moved, with local limestone blocks cut on site and huge slabs of granite quarried and polished in Aswan. Some internal granite blocks reach tens of tons, and we still do not know how they were placed in such confined areas of the pyramids. Imagine the simple arithmetic. How many boat trips would be necessary to bring these materials? What vessel of the time could support even a single 12-ton block, or blocks reaching up to 80 tons? And the millimetric cuts in the stones? And the transport logistics? How many workers? How many draft animals? How many Nile flood seasons would be required to move such volume? And then, how to raise millions of blocks weighing between two and a half and eighty tons, leveling them with centimeter precision? Some calculations and archaeological models try to answer with ramps, sledges, water lubrication, and massive organization of labor, estimating tens of thousands of workers over decades. Others claim that even so logistical and technological gaps remain. The true provocation here is visual and moral. To imagine thousands of people under a scorching sun, fed by a permanent supply network, housed, medically tended, and coordinated to cut, polish, transport, and set stone, to imagine the temporary city that must have arisen around the project. Where were the quarries? How was transport accomplished? Who designed the angles? How was measurement and leveling achieved with such precision without modern instruments? For many, these gaps open space for extraordinary hypotheses. Lost technologies, vanished knowledge, even interventions that go beyond traditional engineering. On the other hand, modern archaeology has produced documents and evidence that support human solutions, transport records, diaries that describe the movement of stone, practical experiments that recreate lifting techniques, and plausible models of social organization for complex archaic Egyptian societies. Our work here is not to decide for you, but to present the counts, the 3D simulations of possible engineering, the practical experiments, and the conflicting voices, from Egyptologists, who defend human capability to opinions that call for explanations beyond the ordinary. We want you to see the mathematics, feel the logistics, and also feel the unease. If the construction were entirely human, how do you explain the most radical technical challenges? If you believe something beyond the period's knowledge intervened, what evidence would you demand to be convinced? In the end, we invite reflection. Mystery without method becomes speculation. Method without imagination becomes aridity. Discuss with respect, question with rigor, and join the investigation. If you enjoyed this episode, comment, share, and subscribe to Marvel and Mysteries to follow the next chapters. We will see you soon.